Hello and welcome again to the Blueprint of the Universe series where we are currently taking a microcosmic look at the Library of Alexandria and the people involved within it, the politics, the processes, the um, use for the resources of the accumulation of knowledge and we're also following directly the line of head librarians within the library, the profit line that we've been following since the beginning of this series. Now these individuals, as mentioned in the previous ones, it's going to be a set series of smaller videos as there is quite a few different individuals that take this role over this time period we are currently in. And it's important to look at each one as their events play a great part in the knowledge we have today. And the way Alexandria was structured, what it was used for, and how it relates to the, the kings and, and, and so on. And so in this video we're going to look at an individual called Apollonius of Rhodes, who was the next in line after Xenodotus of Theseus. Now, Apollonius was around 295 BC and became the next in the line of librarians. Now, the individual himself was a man shrouded in mystery, but he is the author of the very famous story of Jason and the Argonauts, or Jason and the Golden Fleece, which we'll discuss in a moment. Now, what we need to understand with this is it's a symbolic context. Um, it's a symbolic story just like um, the Iliad and um, the Odyssey which feature different periods within Greece at that time written by Homer and it was a few more written by Hesiod at equally at the same time. So there is an important factor we need to play but let's just look at the rest of Polonius involvement within the line of knowledge as well. So, Apollonius was the student of a man called Callimachus, and he, he was also a student of a future librarian, which we'll look at individually, called Aresphonius. Now, let's just go back then. So, obviously he's playing the administrative role, he's helping accumulate the works of the library, he's carrying on the village of uh, um, Aristotle and Alexander and Ptolemy, and the individuals we've seen so far. The important part here is that he brings something new to the table, which is the whole point of this library position. He is a student of different um, great philosophers in their own special specialities, and he is taking those specialities and information and add it to the line of knowledge being passed on to him from his predecessor in the line of knowledge, which was Xenodotus, who was then passed on by his teacher and so on. So we're amalgamating knowledge as we mentioned in the previous video into a condensed unified location and time. Now interestingly enough Apollonius is accredited with the writing of Jason the Argonauts and the Golden Fleece however it's important fact to note that this was actually around the story was around at the time of Homer in the 8th century BC so why does Apollonius get credited with being its author? Well, it's because he's the first one to write it down in public. The chance that it's probably written down before by his teacher and he's just bringing it into the public view and light at the time. He's probably all also, just as um, Zandotus did, expand on the Iliad and um, the Odyssey. And so for, therefore getting the credit for that. So he didn't write the story, he just put it into context and analysed it and explained it in much a way his predecessor did with Homer's other works. And he, we wouldn't have that today if he didn't do this, so it's an extremely important thing. Now just like the Iliad and the Odyssey, it's a symbolic story, it's a part of um, shamanic storytelling where crucial parts of information are intermingled with certain things that happen in history, it's all mixed together, jumbled about, and then a story comes out of it that gets passed on. And it's like, you, you can be taught the story, but you need the key or the secrets to learn what's within the story itself to understand what it is. And that's what he does here by writing a commentary about it. He expands it, he explores it, he cleans it up, and he allows it to be absorbed into the general populace by putting the book he writes into the um, Temple of Serapis for all to understand. And it's a very complex thing. Now the story of Jason the Argonauts is extremely important to the point where let's just look at the impact it has. Now the idea of the Golden Fleece is used up until this day. For example, in um, Georgia it's used in their um, kind of national art and national concepts and identity. It's used in the city of Leeds where it's their coat of arms. 
Um, it's used in societies and orders and sacred concepts of um, protecting, establishing, developing and accumulating knowledge within certain societies such as the Order of the Golden Fleece. It's a recognised symbol with more connotations than we previously thought because the Golden Fleece represents enlightenment. It represents the gift of knowledge. Now the story of the Golden Fleece, we're not going to go through the whole thing obviously, but the idea of the original Golden Fleece, like I say, was around the time of Homer and it was set in the times pre, um, pre-Troy, in fact, when the founding of Colchis and also um, Thessaly. So there's two parts to this as a precursor where it's the story of the founding of Colchis and then Jason themselves go to find the fleece later on um, during the establishment of Thessaly. Um, as, and then it was written in the time of Homer and then rewritten here at this time. So there's multi layers of times, there's different historical points. And so when Apollonius rewrites it, we don't know if he included some of the events that happened previously into this writing. But we also have to remember, just like most of the things that's written post time, but it's also, we need to look at it at the time when it was created, not in, in their eyes or perspective, not the time it was written and also not now looking back at it so the golden fleece was said to be um, part of the golden ram that flew and carried the individual that allowed cultures to be settled now the idea of this is it's it's information um, it's inspiration it's the divine knowledge from the gods now we have to remember that the gods were the olympians and the olympians were played by the Hyksos kings uh, as part of the king-making ritual and the king that settled cultures was a blood relative of these and it's like the use of the mind space, use of the king-making ritual to gain this information to guide him to cultures to settle it. So he was given the information from his predecessors, the uh, bloodline of the kings in this use of the trance state ritual to find the best place to settle to be inspired to create a new civilization, to pick this land to then thrive. And so the golden fleece isn't a thing, it's a representation of knowledge, information and enlightenment and the king-making ritual. And so when he arrives here, he sacrifices the um, golden um, uh, ram to Zeus. Now Zeus, again, as we say, is, is the idea of the gods. And so Zeus again represents the higher powers, um, also the bloodline and the, the head of the Olympian and the ultimate king. So again, if we have, for example, all these minor kings settling their civilizations, they're parts of the court of the king, their blood relatives uh, to pass on the family line. The Zeus effectively would be um, like his father. So it's like the king of kings, the, the one that's ruling the civilization at the moment. Um, and we looked at that in that time period, so go back and check that out. But that's what it's referring to, and it's the use of this vehicle of enlightenment, and it's the fleece that was taken from the ram after, that is what Jason is trying to find. Now, Jason represents the servant of the king at the time of Thessaly. Now, um, that can be described as any individual... Uh, on a mission to find knowledge from the request of their king. it's We have to look at it as passion, it's a role to be played out. So Jason represents the individual in search for knowledge, but also he's been given the instruction by his king, which at this time Apollonius could be describing as Ptolemy and Alexander. It's the wishes of those kings, those bloodlines, the bloodline of the king to search knowledge. So actually Jason's quest for knowledge represents the um, prophet line who are searching for knowledge, gathering knowledge and information at the bequest of the king line, which can be applied to any generation at any time since the start of um, Egypt. So we have a greater symbolic meaning. The voyage itself represents the sailing through time and space and energy, which is the search for answers and truth and along the way these toils and troubles which are to do with the psychological um, 
difficulties you find when you're trying to reach spiritual enlightenment but eventually you do find the fleece with the help of um the, the, it is said to be the help of a certain individual um a female which can be described as uh, the mary figure or the isis figure or the the moon um which is also to do with the um spirit guide uh, of spiritual development that guides you through the final steps to enlightenment um, and, you, and he gains the fleece and he takes it home and then he gives it to the king and uh, that civilization becomes the next in line to rule the Greek nation because it's all powerful, it's a, see, a sign of kingship. So we also have the passing of knowledge from one to another. We also have the then for the fleece gets passed from father to son, from prince to king, which is exactly the same role as Cyrus passing it to Horus, and Horus becoming a Cyrus. And so it becomes a right of office, a kingship, a title. But then we know that the fleece is representation of knowledge in the universe and enlightenment, and therefore it's the teachings and the vehicle of knowledge and enlightenment being passed on from king to prince to king to prince and so on. And that's what it represents. So it's multi-generational. So what he's actually writing about is the king-making ritual, the blood ritual, the the blood, um, the bloodline, but also the ties of um, the priest and the prophet line seeking knowledge for the kings, and the personal journey of an individual on their way to achieving enlightenment. Um, through the search of knowledge and this king-making ritual. And it's also a story of reclaiming that from another. So it's also the story of Ptolemy's family claiming the king-making ritual and the blood rites from the House of David, who have recently just moved to Egypt as well because they have then passed it on. So the story, although it's an ancient story, the same story can be used to apply to the time that Apollonius wrote it, or wrote it down, or expanded upon it. And so we have to look at it in each time frame, in each setting, and symbolically, because literally, it doesn't mean anything. Literally, you can say, well, it wasn't. It was written after the times. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a story. It's just poetry. But you can also say, well, even in real time, none of this happened. It's obvious it never happened. There was no such thing as these events that happened with Jason, who all mythical and all gods related and flights of fancy with a, a fleece that could, a ram that could fly. It's all flights of fancy. That's true. So it can't be a real telling, but it's a real telling of symbolic events, both before um, or at the time of the founding of Colchis, the founding of Thessaly, at the time of Homer, um, at the time of Apollonius and Ptolemy, but also it was passed on because the stories weren't created then. They were changed in the time of Colchis to represent certain aspects of the king-making ritual, the movement of the Hyksos kings from Egypt, and even potentially stories from ancient Egypt before the loss of the Hyksos kings. Um, we also have... Um, Interestingly enough, we have uh, pottery and images based around 340 BC, um, based on the story of the Golden Fleece, which have angels involved, and it's the first time we see a winged angelic figure placing a halo above the head of Jason who's carrying the fleece, because again, it's the halo, it's enlightenment, but the winged figure is an angel. I'll let that just sink in. Now, the angel at this time, we didn't have Christians, we didn't have religions like that, we didn't have the Bible, we didn't have the context of angels, but we did have in Hebrewism, we had the idea of angels and devils in Hebrewism, which is part of Judaism, which links in with the house of David that's arrived at Heliopolis and then the high priest of Joachim. And so it describes its incorporation of an angelic theme into a Hyksos context but remember the Hyksos did have angels because they were built on the ideas of Hebrewism as well but it's not an angelic angel isn't part of Greek culture specifically so it's a very interesting point to, to note and we need to make sure we mention that because it's it's an extremely pivotal role if we go back to all oh, angels were created later on well they weren't because they're here there's evidence of them there's imagery in 340 BC 
I found something similar with Crete. Um, I've, I've seen for my own eyes, but there's Cretan um, pottery with drawings and diagrams of a universal concept on it at 17,000 BC. And that's well before that these the images that are used in modern day times to represent the same things were used. So they obviously existed before, like the cross, for example. The cross existed, the idea of the cross and the use of the cross existed in 17,000 BC in Crete because it's there with glue written down. Just because they didn't write about it between and, and now doesn't mean it didn't exist because there's pictures of it and being used and being worshipped. It's the same here with the angelic figure. So we need to understand these ideas because they exist as well before we think they did. And they are passed on through stories and this poetry and now they're being brought together because once again we saw that Homer, Homer's work was used by Xenodotus because it's the foundation of where this language is coming from which is passed on before so he's creating an expansive bedrock to then build upon for the other stories well this is one of those stories that has been kind of put to the sidelines up until now so Apollonius's job as head librarian was to bring this in to add to the foundation stone of the triplicity, the um, Golden Fleece, the Iliad and the Odyssey and this will build on for the rest of time. So I hope you like that, I hope it answers some questions, it's a very important part of our history is the story of the Golden Fleece but we must use it symbolically and we must represent uh, we must understand what it represents through time and also here uh, with the um, rewriting of Apollonius. So I hope you've enjoyed. Please like, subscribe and follow us on the next one because we will look at the next individual to carry on the line of the librarian at this time in history. So please uh, yeah, like, subscribe, follow us and we will see you next time in the channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hello and welcome again to the Blueprint of the Universe series where we are currently